Hello everyone, soy Alejandro de Fuego and welcome to Faster Than Light. Now this is a simple um, top-down kind of strategy game where you start out with a ship and you have to travel through sectors to get to Federation headquarters and deliver some information to stop the rebel fleet. Basically you're given a ship uh, based on which ship you choose. I mean you're only given one in the beginning but you can unlock better ships later on. You start out with that ship, whatever weapons you're given, and then as you progress, you um, upgrade your ship, better your crew, gain experience and stuff. And as you go forward, you have to do all this stuff, and then defeat the rebels, like, mothership or whatever it's called. So, it's a pretty um, fun game, simple in design, but... I've played it a few times, I've never won, I've gotten pretty close. There's video evidence of that, but it was during a live stream so it didn't get like saved or anything. Anyway, for this first episode I'm just gonna go in and show you, you know, the basics of the game. Okay, so the Kestrel is the first ship you get, so far I've unlocked three different ships. The Kestrel, which is a human ship. You've got the Taurus, which is a... Oh my god, what, I forgot what these guys are called. Engi ship. NG, Engi. And then the Ad... Ah, I know. The Adjust... Adjudicator. I don't know how to pronounce that. This is a Zoltan ship. Each, um, each of these ships have their advantages and disadvantages. I mean, the Kestrel is sort of the basic one. You get two weapons, room to install two more. Um, you start out with three humans. With the Taurus, you have you start out with a one weapon, but it's an iron weapon, so it doesn't do like physical damage. So you have to rely on the drone for a bit. And, but you can only install two more weapons with a total of three. But with the drone thing, you can launch drones to attack, repair, do whatever. And you're given three drones to work with. And with the this one, this is honestly my favorite one so far. I've gotten the furthest with this. You're given two weapons with the option to upgrade twice. And you've got the Zoltan shield which um, basically makes your shield more powerful, be able to withstand more hits to start off with. But I'm gonna go with the Kestrel, the first ship, to show you the basics of the game. I honestly don't expect me myself to get very far in this run, and I'm gonna be cutting a lot of empty space out because the game is basically jumping from place to place, a lot of text, a lot of random events, and I'm only going to show you, basically, the highlights of this run. So, let's go. The data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure you explore each sector before moving on to the next. But, bef but get to the exit before, push before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. Anyway, that's just an uh, introduction that I already kind of explained to you. But it says it much better. So this is the ship as it looks now. These are the weapons, they're not powered. Let's power them up in case we encounter any enemies. This is our power bar, and when the power is being used by systems, it's shown here. It shows how much power the system uses from the bars. You can go to the ship, examine this, you can upgrade the power. You can upgrade the efficiency of your um, your systems, but they will require more power, and you have to upgrade your reactor to be able to provide them with more power. This is the crew complement. You can see I have a total of seven, but so far I only have three humans. Each species has sort of an advantage and disadvantage, as you'll maybe see later on as I get more crew. And this is the equipment. We can have three augmentations. We don't know how many drones we can have because we don't have that system installed. 
doesn't come standard with this ship, but we can buy it or find it later on. And this is just um, extra items we may pick up. Like, if we pick up items and stuff and we don't want to use. If we pick up like weapons or drones, but we can't install them or we don't want to. They'll be remaining there. And the augmentations that we buy or pick up later on. Anyway, let's... These are the stars, and this is the exit. This is basically the map of our first sector, and we warp to beacons. An unvisited location. Let's just warp to a couple, and then I'll start cutting when we get to silence. Oh. See, it's a good thing we have the weapons um, activated, because now they're going to start charging immediately. You detected an automated outpost rebel scout attacking a small refueling outpost. Now we can intervene to defend the outpost or avoid it. I usually like to intervene. Attacking gets us um, good stuff sometimes, especially when we're helping someone else out. Attacking the automated ship moves in to engage your ship. Okay, let's go on. I like to put on auto fire so that way we're... our weapon systems just got hacked so we're not charging. Okay, um... Okay. Great. Our shields are critical. You. Go over here. You can send your crew in to repair ships, repair shields, and do stuff. I forgot. You can pause during battle and set up where your weapons can go, like... I'm gonna press 2, activate the burst laser, and shoot it at the targeting system, because that's right now on our way. And number 1. Now the Artemis is a missile type weapon. It requires missiles to shoot, and our missile count is right here. Burst laser is not a missile using weapon, so you can shoot it without using missiles and stuff. Okay, um, let's not have both of them firing right there. Shoot down their weapon system too so they can stop shooting our, their weapons at us. Now our ship can target very specific, um, specific rooms of the enemy ship to- oh god, hang on. There is a fire, now there are a couple of ways to deal with fire either through suffocating the fire by opening doors, which is my preferred method. Actually, let's open the other doors. Or you can put them out, but that seriously puts a risk at your um, crew member's health. This way the fire can be smothered by lack of air. Right now we're being... The fire is being smothered by lack of air, but right now our weapon systems are being destroyed by the fire. Oh my god. What a what a nice first warp. Now we close the doors and send this guy Oh my god. Oh whatever, we can smother this fire too. Oh my god, we're getting destroyed here. The worst part is our weapon systems are down, so we can't even destroy them. And that's bad too now, because now we can't even charge and run away after the Okay, um, I know this is a bad run, and most... A lot of people don't, um... Okay, as soon as we get a weapon, let's, let's fire it, let's fire- oh god, no, we got hacked. Come on. Bay fixed. Shields are critical. Shields are down. Yes! No! No, not good at all. Not good at all. Um... We don't even have a weapon we can use right now. At least our shields are up. That's one good thing. The second our Artemis missile comes back online, we have to... 
Yes, power. Shoot it. And we got hacked. Okay, we're gonna die. We are going to die. This is why I really don't like the Kestrel. It's pretty weak once you've gotten used to the strength of other... Wait, wait, where did... Oh god, are that... Yep, we died. I didn't even notice one of my crew died. One last explosion marks your fate as your ship is torn apart. Look at that, you get a score of 20. I've done far better than that, trust me. See, look, stats. In the Kestrel, I've gotten a max score of 1417. In the Taurus, 2581. And in the Adjectator, 3414. And as you can see, I got to Sector 8. This is the run I almost won on. This is my favorite ship. Anyway, um, that was the Kestrel. Let's, um, let's go to the hangar. Should I do another run with the Kestrel? I don't know. I want to show off this first ship of the game, but, eh, let's go again. The worst that could happen is we die again. Struggling against enemy drones, target the drone system to temporarily disable, temporarily disable them. That's what I was trying to do. But our weapon systems got hacked by the drones, so we were pretty much screwed. Basically, if you have weak shields and your weapons are hacked, you're screwed. Which is why upgrading is very important. I didn't want to pause, I want to press continue. Okay. Charge up the weapons. And let's jump. Please let this first jump be an okay jump. As soon as you arrive, you receive a Federation encrypted message. A rebel ship has been terrorizing the local civilians in the system. Please seek and destroy it. <sighs> Let's go attack it. Why not? Spend some time looking around. Your scanners cannot pick up any trace of the rebel ship and prepare to move on. Okay, good. No combat. Sometimes we've helped people out. You can get stuff. I already said that. And we warp right into combat this time. Attack the automated ship to get sensor information. Let's attack it. Why not? And they're sending out her. Okay. Attack their systems right away. Oh god, that's not good. Um, they hacked our oxygen system. As you can see, we are. Lo well, we did lose oxygen. It's okay now. They're gonna. Ca our shields are down, but we can manage. In fact, this guy go over here for now. Um, make sure our shields are kept up. The engine will charge on its own. Okay, see, this is how it should have gone the first time. And now we turn off auto fire. We don't need the missiles any more than we don't need to fire the missiles any more than necessary because they are limited, as I mentioned before. So you see the missiles ready to fire, but it's not firing because I turned off auto fire. And there we go. That ship is destroyed. And look at that. We're at full health. The hull's at full. And we got some scrap. Scrap is good for upgrading and stuff. However, during the first sect, see, now that we destroyed that and picked up the information, now we know where everything is. Um, now we're going to go down, check out the dangerous sector, just because there's nothing here. Let's continue. Oh look, we found a scout ship. Let's fight it. Start off paused so we can turn on auto fire. Blast their shields. Missiles can get through shields. Um, energy weapons like burst lasers. They're. They're like blast power is weakened by shields. So shots per charge 3. 
because they have a level 1 shield, the shots per charge would be 2 damaging and 1 to lower the shields. So if we shoot down the shields, our burst lasers will be more effective. They're powering their FTL, they're trying to get away. If they get away, they will reveal our position to the, f to the rebel fleet and that'll make them um, approach faster. Anyway, I think we're going to fast forward through this um, battle, only give you the highlights. Oh shoot, um, no no, I want to do one, and two can fire at the drone system. There we go, we destroyed their faster than the light system, they can't warp away, and now they're dead. We got scrap, missiles, and... like, warp fuel? Fuel for jumping. That's what this is. Each jump consumes one fuel, so it's good that we get fuel. We go up here, and then we can access the store and buy some stuff so we can get. Normally, I like to be completely free of um, missile based weaponry, just because I don't like having to worry about my missile counts. Find your seraph surrounded by a group of mysterious alien vessels. They hail you and apparently have some valuable technology for sale. Let's check it out. Ooh, clone bay. Didn't think I would get that early on. Okay, so right now I have a med bay, which heals your people. With a clone bay, it gets rid of your medical bay, but it also revives dead, um, dead crew. So the trade-off is you can't heal your crew, but you can get them back through cloning. Uh, they also had a drone control, but we couldn't afford that. I like the clone bay, because as long as it's powered, your crew will never disappear. Yes, I wanted to replace the clone bay with med bay. No point in jumping to the next store, because we were just at a store. Anyway, let's check out the distress signal. The distress signal is coming from a small space station orbiting an uninhabited planet. The satellite defense system has gone haywire, and the repair crew can't approach without it being fired on. They're looking for help to fix or disable it. Let's promise to help. Wait, why not? You consider your options. We only have one option. And look at that, we helped them, we got stuff. Now there are a lot of these events um, throughout the game. That can either help or hurt you. Ooh, we spot a rebel ship nearby. Let's demand the surrender of the goods, why not? They look like they don't want to fight, they're trying to escape. And if they escape, they will tell our position to the rebel fleet, rebel fleet, and the rebel fleet's approach will be faster. Let's fire an Artemis at their engine. No, let's fire it at their shields, and then the burst laser at their engine. You gotta be smart with your weapon placement and your weapon usage, as I've already said. And there's that little drone shooting at us. That's what drones can do. You can send drones to constantly attack other people, defend your thing, repair your systems, hack, do whatever. But we don't have drones, so we can't do any of that. Oh god, no. Nope, nope, nope. Um, you... Hang on. No, I don't want to send you anywhere yet. I want to smother the fire, and then we can Systems. Oh, look at that, we destroyed the rebel ship. We can't jump if there's no captain, or if our faster than light engine is damaged in any way. So I'm gonna have to send um, Mikhail. Mikhail. Mika, Michael? I want to say Michael, but that's a weird way of spelling it. We're getting some Michael to repair the ship system. We need more crew, by the way. There's a few ways to get them, and I'll explain them as we go along. You can either buy them as you saw in the shop, um, pick them up through events, or there are slave ships which you can either purchase them off, or destroy the ship, but 
have mercy on them, so they give you a ship. They give you a slave for their lives. Anyway, let's jump. We can either check this or go straight to the exit, and I'm gonna check this. Because as long as the rebel fleet is not right on our asses, I like to take my time in reaching the exit. I hate hacker systems. I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. And our shields are hacked. No, no, no. Our shields are hacked and our shields are down, but now our shields are back up, so that's good. Our cameras are down, which means we can't see inside the ship. You go repair our cameras, and the ship is destroyed. We got stuff. We got more stuff. See, look at that. Um, all that stuff. Okay, that's the bad thing about cameras being destroyed. I didn't know that room was on fire. Let's, um, quench the fire. I can hear the sound of our ship on, on fire, so I'm keeping the, um, thing open until it... With the cameras off, you cannot see in rooms that you're not in, which is very, um, disadvantage disadvantageous. Our crew also has health, which, um, okay, hang on. Oh god, no. I'm, I, I fucked up. Oh no, wait. It's all good. It's all good. Now you... No. Don't open that door. Go in here. Repair our camera system, and now we can jump while you're repairing that. As you can see, our hull is down a bit, but we can repair those at stations and stuff. We've arrived at the beacon, we can jump to the next sector. Awesome. Oh. Oh. No. Um. Okay. Now, some events you can lose your crew by doing this kind of thing. But, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna... Board, look for survivors, see what happens. Oh, sweet. We got Shirai. That's one of the things I was talking about. Let's see what she's good at. She doesn't seem to have any, um, any extraordinary talents, so we're going to throw you in the shields room, and we're going to move everyone back to where they need to be. Where they need to be. I can English. And we can jump to the next sector. We can either go to the dangerous abandoned sector, or we can go to the dangerous pirate controlled sector. Let's go the abandoned way. Abandoned's always fun. And anyway, we've made it to sector two. We just have to make it through six more sectors after this before we get to the rebel fleet. Before we get to the Federation, give the information, and we have to fight the rebel fleet ship leader thing. Oh my god. Okay, see, nothing is labeled because we don't have the um, sector information like we did with the other one because we didn't attack a um, an information drone or anything. Nope, we're orbiting into combat. Discover an abandoned mining facility in the process of being acquired by the Lanius. However, you may receive a call from a civilian transport vessel help or trying to escape before the Lanius came only to be caught by pirates. You see a lone pirate ship boarding the civilian crafts. I always like to attack the pirates. Always attack instead of avoid conflict. Unless I'm really hurting. And you always want to use a missile to attack the shields first because missiles go through shields. Crap. Crap, 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 crap. I'm gonna have to seriously, um... Destroy their weapons. I really, really hate those, um... Whatchamacallit, those missiles. And the pirates are destroyed. Good, but... Contact the civilian ship. Five hull points repair, that's good. Our oxygen is going down because our oxygen system is repaired. Let's send Mikhail to repair that for us, shall we? So we don't suffocate and die. Now, the rebel fleet isn't approaching too fast, so I don't have to worry about making it to the... Oh my god. 
ask if they require assistance, send them scrap, leave. Yeah, let's ask if they require assistance. Oh, look at that, they want to attack us. We want to help them, they want to attack us. Oh crap, our oxygen is going very down. And my crew is starting to suffocate a bit. Let's send you back to the engine room. We will not accept surrender. Oh crap, Shirai's not- oh wait, we have the clone base, so... Watch this, guys. So, Shirai dies. And so, Mikhail is about to die, too. Hang on. Okay, this is bad, actually. This is very bad. You- get out of there. Go to the room with oxygen. Oh, you already died. Go over here, quickly repair the oxygen system. Um, because we don't want our crew to suffocate. Because what good is a cloning bay? Oh, look at that. Shirai's back. Shirai was clones, and now back in action. Okay, but what good is a cloning bay if we're just going to be sending clones to be clones into a ship without air, just to die right again? Okay, this is something. Skipped a couple of jumps there, because it was just nothing missed. Nothing happened. Anyway, as usual, send a missile at their shields. Send the burst laser at their weapons. And wait for them to fire. You can either accept their offer, or continue attacking them. I like to usually continue attacking them unless they offer something really good. And don't want to risk that being destroyed by um, attacking them again. And they are dead. Look at that beautiful ship breaking up animation. See, look, we got less, um, we got less fuel than what they offered in this render, but more scrap. So I guess that's the trade-off that we made by continuing to attack them. I probably should have mentioned this is where the rebel fleet is. These are beacons that have taken control, that have been taken control of by the rebels, and these are gonna be taken into control of during the next jump. So it's good to have more crew because crew have different um, different uh, aliens have different abilities. Now, I've been told against buying crew because you can get them for free, but for the sake of um, showing you guys stuff, I'm just going to buy all these guys. And look, we got more crew. Having crew in certain systems will sort of upgrade your systems automatically. Like, you'll see what happens now that we have Hector. No, this is, Co this is um, Kusi. Having Kusi in the camera room. Anyway, now we have a full crew complement. Now, the smart thing would be to go to the civilian sector, because it's safer. But, because of the type of person I am, let's go to the rock-controlled sector. The rock people are a powerful and proud race. It is not unheard of to have a peaceful journey through their lands, but don't count on it. They like to attack. Rock people... Oh, I forgot. These guys, um... I guess these guys don't like air. Which is good, we can send them into oxygenless areas to repair things. Ooh, this is a good one. You see, we could have either stripped the ship, left it alone, or we could check for life forms and keep a lookout for ships while looting the wreck. Without the slug guy, we couldn't have done this, but let's do that. Savage what you can from the ship, no life forms or ships are detected nearby. That's good. Let's attack these guys now. Man, a lot of this game is just waiting for things to happen because everything goes slowly. So there's going to be a lot of cuts in this video. There was already a delay when I tried to record once and Audacity crashed as I was rendering the audio. So the audio got deleted and I could not use that video file at all because it was just... It was just a mess. Anyways, hopefully we're, if you're seeing this video, hopefully we're back on track and everything. Anyway, before we jump, let's um, upgrade the shields once, upgrade the power bars twice, and watch what happens. Power this, and now we have a second level to our shields, which means we can withstand being shot twice before they get through our shields. Oh look, an asteroid field. <clears throat> now these are interesting places to go into combat. Oh, by the way guys, um, because we have a slug in the camera room, we can see inside the ship, know where all the crew is, 
so that way we can target systems and know when they're going to be repaired and everything. And just basically good advantage. That's why I like to get people into different places. Anyway, as I was saying about the um, asteroid field, you see we're getting attacked, not, neither side is firing. That's because the asteroids um, occasionally bombard our ship, our shields. Like, because it's a good thing we upgraded when we did, because otherwise our shields will constantly be dropping completely by the asteroids. But because we have the shields doubled, the asteroid will hit our sh shield once, and we still have one level of shield protecting us before the next one hits. We can see inside the ship and know that their engine is on fire, by the way. And now we know their ship is dead. And that's... When you're in danger, by the way, you still have to wait for your faster than light drive to charge. Yeah, this game is a lot of waiting around. You're not going to get the full effect of how much waiting this game is. For example, this, um... According to Audacity, I've been recording for 49 minutes. Now how long the video is at this point, I don't know. Could be half that length, or less. Or more, I don't know. Depends on how much useful stuff I find in this video. Oh, another rock peoples. Let's attack them the same way we attack the other guys. Yeah, this game is a lot of waiting around, a lot of strategy, a lot of knowing where to place your energy and time. It's also a lot of luck. Like, usually, it takes me forever to get a good um, clone bay. And also, sometimes you just get attacked at random. Not attacked. A lot of the times, one slip up can be the end of a good run, and you just get destroyed by right then and there. Or you can get really lucky and get pulled out of a really bad one. I usually don't have runs like this good in the Kestrel, so that'll show you that sometimes this game is based a lot on luck. Hmm, we've got good stuff. And we're in another asteroid field. I think I'm just gonna skip over the bulk of this fight. I'll cut in to show you. Show me winning, or losing, or when something interesting happens. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Our weapon systems are on fire. That's not good, that's not good, that's not good. And as soon as the fire is smothered, we'll send in the... We'll send in her to repair the system. Even though there's no oxygen in that room. As you can see, our burst laser is useless because our weapons room is on fire. Okay, fire's out. Send in you to repair the um, system because you can do okay in um, in oxygenless environments. See, she's not losing any health, whereas most of our other crew members would in the same room. I normally wait for the um, room to fill up with oxygen again, and then send the person who's actually supposed to be in there to repair the ox to repair the weapons, but. Um, I want to attack these guys back as soon as possible. Or we can just jump and avoid the situation altogether. That's another thing, you don't have to kill a person once you engage in combat. You can wait for your faster than life drive to, to fully charge up and jump away as soon as that's able. Screw those rocks. Oh, I forgot. Um, save, your current pr cr save your current crew positions and return crew to safe positions, meaning that you can send your crew all over the ship, like, and when you get a teleporter bay, you can teleport them off ship, and teleport them back, and, you know, send them around to repair, do stuff, fight guys, and with the click of a button, everyone goes back to where they need to be. Anyway, I'm gonna select the next sector, and then it's gonna be the end of the episode. You have arrived in Engi space. The fall of the Federation has brought tough times to these robotic life forms, but they're usually willing to help. Okay, everyone, that's going to be it for this episode. Um, hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Or don't. Do whatever the hell you want. If you want me to continue this run on the next episode, or you want me to show off the other ships, um, tell me in the comments below. Okay, that's it. Um, gracias, and have a good day.